welcome to Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel. Uh, today I'm going to handle this just immediate concluded uh, uh, NECO practicals on chemistry. So the corrections, the the questions and the way they're supposed to be answered actually and uh, that will help you not to fail again and will now prepare you for the next coming examination. So don't forget to ask your questions when necessary using the comment box. Thanks for being there. So I'll have to replay the questions. Okay. This question number one as usual, obulet reading for initial and final. And you see there, as well as that of prepared, they are trying to tell you precautions that you need to take. Then the information, what matters here is take the information about A. A is a solution, you see it, then this, then that. So you see this. Are you going to make your table? Let's see the other questions. I'm going to start from question three in answering, uh, which is actually. I think after this we have a yes this one's here continued calculations more pdm cube then and the I think there is a one that is a is actually missing here Mm, that's the one they talk about. Uh, I think that one is just the math. Okay, I will start uh, with number three questions. Uh, from number three, I go to two, then from two, I will go to this is actually number two, which is salt analysis. I'll just read the table. Now, uh, this is number three. So, this is where I'm going to start. Uh, number three it says, when sodium hydroxide is added to an unknown salt, a white chalky precipitate is found. Mention two ions that are likely present. Please take note here. They say chalky. This particular statement is what made the answers to be limited a bit. So they say chalky. This so we I might lift my note here. Okay. So, I guess you can see the write up well. Okay. So, the thing here is that uh, when they say chalky, the correct answer here is that if it is chalky, you use either calcium or lead 2 ion. That's the two possible things that might be there. Even barium should also be correct. But since they say it's chalky, please, you saying, you in this case mentioning uh, anything like uh, aluminium zinc is wrong because the white precipitate in zinc is actually gelatinous it is sticky it is not chalky so that is where the major thing lies here so calcium gives chalky precipitate which is insoluble in excess of the sodium dioxide while lead 2 gives chalky that's powdery precipitate which dissolves in excess of the sodium hydroxide now you can watch my video here known as a detailed test for cations here check it over here in this channel you will see how i demonstrated the test for these ions the, uh, even uh, the so-called uh, other ones that we can't get by this wet process like potassium sodium I use flame tests check it out on this channel then coming to number I hope you got what I said about three, number 3a that's aluminium and zinc shouldn't be correct because zinc gives us what we call gelatinous not chalky precipitate that's the problem here then remember aluminium lead and zinc will dissolve in excess of aqueous sodium dioxide why because aluminium lead and zinc are all amphoteric metals their hydroxides and their oxides are all amphoteric but calcium will not dissolve in excess of a sodium hydroxide but the precipitate form is chalky when you add sodium dioxide to it barium will also give you chalky precipitate from experience then number two uh, 3b says define concentrated acid this is where students might make a little mistake. Concentrated acid it doesn't really mean strong acid. So a concentrated acid is an acid that has more acid molecules than water molecules. There are more acid molecules than water molecules. That is a solution of an acid that have low water potential but high hydrogen concentrations. If there are more hydrogen ion concentration in a given solution of an acid, you say that such acid is a concentrated acid. And remember, concentrated acids are corrosive. Now, if 
a given solution of an acid, a cure solution, have more water molecule, have higher water potential than the acid molecules themselves. You say that such acid is a dilute acid. Now, number B, I, I, say strong acid. A strong acid is an acid that ionizes completely. That is complete ionization. An acid that have complete ionization is a strong acid. That is acid that ionizes completely in water such that strong acids have high electrical conductivity. Why? Because there are more ions that are available to carry out, uh, uh, to conduct uh, electricity. They are strong electrolytes, of course, because of their, the, the, the rate at which they release the ions in a solution. Then a strong acid can be concentrated or dilute. So, for example, H2SO4, HCl, HNO3 are all strong acids. They can be concentrated, they can be dilute. So, don't think that dilute acids are weak acids. Why? Strong acids are concentrated acids. They are not that. So, I've just told you that right here, if you are asked to fill in the answer, I'll come here direct. I'll say here is calcium or lead. From practical experience, I told you that even barium can also be here. You know, but in O level, we do the science of uh, first 20 elements or the common ones. Uh, then, define concentrated acid is an acid that have more hydrogen ion concentration with less water. Thus, acid that have what more hydrogen ions with uh, less water molecules. So, when there are more acid molecules, they are having higher molecules of the acid and lower percentage of water. You say it is concentrated. So, in other words, is there is an acid that have higher number of uh, acid molecules and uh, low water percentage say it is then this one is an acid that ionizes completely in water an acid that uh, ionizes completely in water and they are strong electrolytes they release all the ions possible when you dissolve them in solution. Then the next question here, we are shift this here. They say mention one laboratory use of activated uh, charcoal. Uh, you watch my video here. It is actually used to remove colored pigment from an organic material or from a solution. Like in the laboratory, if you want to remove the indicator that is used in uh, acid-based titration, the ideal thing to use here is activated uh, charcoal. So you can do yourself a favor by uh, actually watching this uh, video here. So this video here. Okay, it's not this one. Okay, here it is. Okay, you see, that's the colored tighter mixture I'm holding over there. And you see the uses of activated charcoal is an adsorbent, that's the major thing. And because of this, it's used to remove colored substances. Then you see other uses, whitening of teeth, even in purification of water, air, and in respirators. It has even a medical use in treating overdose and poisoning. Uh, so that's it. Then that's the activated charcoal. Just see how it will remove the color from the indicator. This one is a control experiment. That's just a funnel without the activated charcoal. Okay. So this is colored. Then on dropping it on the activated charcoal. The activated charcoal will absorb the color and at the end you will have a very clear solution dropping then this other one don't have it so this is clear so it is used to remove color there uh, impurities yes of course and other things then we go back to our normal question so then the other question says give give the color of the gas given off when lead nitrate is heated so then i say what is the color of the residue produced in di above so if you know that lead nitrate action of heat on lead nitrate commonly in the laboratory we prepare nitrogen for oxide that is no2 which is a reddish brown gas by heating lead nitrate because it easily gives off this uh, 
gas on slight heating but here the answer should be reddish brown please because the gas released is NO2 but precaution should be taken heating lead nitrate just like most nitrates is quite explosive it might get out of control but the most common one that gives trouble while heating it is actually uh, ammonium nitrate don't try heating that one so I'll play you a video on this. Uh, the answer to this D is actually reddish brown. Then what is the color of uh, what is the color of the residue when you heat lead nitrate? Action of heat is actually going to give you reddish brown. So here, the equation of the reaction will enable you to understand these ones. Uh, Pb NO3 bracket two action of heat. Will give you lead 2 oxide plus NO2 then with the release of oxygen this is the residue actually so this residue let's balance the equation and there should be two here and that balances the equation am I right and oxygen is now this is six six five I think we're gonna put two here and two here this will force us to put four here and when four is there we have a uh, think the equation is balanced this is eight ten twelve which is automatically what is here so the equation is balanced uh, remember it's not good to write equation without balancing it it will ensure that what you have written is scientifically correct so now this is the residue then this is the reddish brown gas actually the color of this is a reddish brown that's the gas giving off then this is also a gas but is oxygen given up that what makes this lead nitrate a powerful oxidizing agent because all nitrates on action of heat will either liberate oxygen not a there is a more that all nitrate liberates oxygen or heat then this residue is what you can see here when this is this time around it is a bit cold some of them have not finished decomposing you see it's yellow when cold and when hot from experience is also yellow um, but when you heat it to a very high temperature it might get reddish already share colored substance that should be lead 2 oxide remember that lead 2 oxide is one of the natural oils of lead i have once extracted lead metal from lead 2 oxide by reducing the lead 2 oxide with lead 2 sulfide it is an entertaining experiment though i have not uploaded that in my research so to understand this question it's better you heat lead carbonate for you to see the color of lead oxide lead carbonate liberates uh, on heating co2 then leaving behind the yellow precipitate uh, uh, the yellow residue which is lead 2 oxide remember lead 2 oxide i told you is yellow when hot and also uh, when cold but in some cases at extreme temperature it gives me reddish brown from experience i'm telling you this so according to this question you are advised to say yellow uh, you can say yellow or red here then here it is automatically yellow then don't confuse this with zinc oxide zinc oxide is white when cold and yellow when hot so this is it about question number three so i go to question number two and this is the table exactly if you have watched my video here on the analysis of ammonium carbonate i'm telling you that this is a kind of prophecy it is real and these things here is what i just explained now here i'm not going to be explaining it again uh, I would rather just fill the table where necessary and tell you to go and watch that video on analysis of ammonium carbonate. C plus 5 cm cube of distilled water and shake thoroughly divide the solution into two portions. So we are asking me what if they dissolve it in water. It's the same thing as we have seen now. Dissolving it in water will still give us similar results. So it, 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 there is no much difference here. So what do you report? Is you, you, you now report C dissolves completely in water. That is it. The observation here is that C dissolves completely in water and there was the inference c is soluble then according they said that uh, you use their own equation you are provided with a uh, sample c they didn't tell you c is a salt or not so just tell the person now c is soluble and yeah, don't say c is a soluble salt because this question didn't identify c as a salt okay then Question B, I say to the first portion, add sodium oxide plus heat. This is test for all ammonium salts. Whenever you add sodium oxide, on adding sodium oxide, your observation should be no visible reaction when you added the sodium oxide. Then on heating, a colorless gas with a choking smell or choking irritating smell liberated, which turned moist red lip moss pepper blue. So over here, your, your observation is going to be no visible reaction no visible reaction on adding NaOH solution on heating 
colorless gas with a choking smell which turned moist red with moist pepper blue you can complete it there which turned moist red with moist pepper blue liberated then what you write here is what simple your inference is only ammonia gas that have this quality you observed here ammonia gas and there's any salt that liberates ammonia gas on treating with a uh, uh, sodium dioxide and heating is uh, an ammonium salt so you now say ammonium ion present or even confirmed because this is enough so you can say ammonia gas for you to identify this gas give you one mark then to tell us the ion present gives you the second mark then the next one here says uh, uh, to the second portion a uh, deep stirring rod into dilute ACA and bring it close to the gas given off in BI. A simple observation is that there will be there is formation of uh, there is formation of white dense fumes. Don't over report telling them ammonium chloride. It doesn't concern them. Just write your observation. White dense fumes formed. So what's your inference? Your inference is nothing but ammonia gas ammonia gas confirmed because that's the gas that will form that white dense film with HCl. ammonia gas confirmed then here to the second portion add uh, add drops of barium chloride solution when you add barium chloride just watch that my video there will be formation of a white powdery precipitate white powdery or chalky precipitate white powdery ppt is what you, you will observe and uh, if this happens and you know that what you added is barium chloride what i taught you is that you suspect actually three ions and these are anions sulfate six ion sulfate four ion or carbonate four ion which is equivalent to the three marks you are seeing here you say present don't confirm yet or you say likely so white powdery precipitate formed. Then here it says to the solution in CI, that is the solution that you have added barium chloride. Uh, they tell you to add dilute ACI. You say PPT dissolves. PPT dissolves. PPT, or you can say precipitate dissolves with effervescent. Effervescent, liberating colorless, odorless grass, liberating colorless, odorless eh, gas. Though in this case there is there might be confusion. It depends on what the marker decides on in the, on the inference. Because if the gas liberated is colorless, odorless, it shows that what is present is actually uh, CO2 from CO3 to minus. But in this case, you because of these uh, two marks here, it is trying to guide you. They are looking for two things. Remember that sulfate six ion will remain insoluble in excess on adding HCl, but this and this will dissolve. So you are just advised to write since you have seen the mark, you just write SO4, not SO4, please. Uh, we need to. Okay, SO3 two minus or CO3 two minus suspected or present. But hence you have said colorless or odorless. You can confirm this. So if you must report this way, just say PPT dissolves with effervescence. You can stop from here. Uh, but if you include this, actually, it, uh, it shows that uh, there should be a kind of a... Uh... Okay, never mind. Okay, there should be a kind of, uh, uh, since the gas is not colored at all, it shows that uh, they are all colorless, but this one having order is only sulfur, four oxide, but carbon four oxide don't have order. So that's it for question number two. Then we go to question number one, which have our calculations uh, and the table also. Okay, here we go. Remember here, first of all, depending on what your school is using, if your school is using uh, 20... 
uh, 0.00 cm cube, a volume of pipette. You write 20 here. If it is, if they are using 25, you write 25. 0.00 cm cube is already written. Then they told us the indicator to be used here, which is metal orange. Then this depends on your school, and I have taught you how to make your table in a, one of the videos here, giving you a guide before this exam. And now let me take my endpoint here to be 22.7. Oh, yeah, within that. So if I want my endpoint to be 22.70, remember you should listen to your uh, school chemistry teacher. But normal thing here is that my own students, I don't give them anything like endpoint because it's a, a kind of my practice in these guys. I train them so much well, they become so much trained that they do titration accurately without varying with more than 0 0.2. It's all about training, of course. Then you can also register with me online anywhere you are and you become a, an authority, an expert as far as chemistry is concerned. And even if you're a chemistry teacher, uh, remember to indicate for, guide, for guidance uh, because I know we are all victims of a theoretical schools here in Nigeria. Uh, thank God and God is using me and I pray that we will change the whole story of Africa to practice science, not just to write them and speak them. When we practice science, we'll be able to solve most of our problem. And uh, in science, you will eventually see that God is good. Okay, let me work on this table, assuming that my endpoint is 22.70. Uh, I uh, will purposely maybe, uh, remember the actual thing is that you do titration because these things I use in analysis, it is helping me a lot. I use it to determine concentrations of any preparation I want to mimic, I'm not there, I want to start my own production, I will use titration and determine the strength of that solution. And I wasn't there when it was produced, and this is how I train my students. So, but here, for the sake of this, because I don't know what to excuse, let's assume that we have our table in this way, uh, if, if the rough, maybe, I will purposely do it uh, 28. Uh, maybe 28.50, then initial should be 0, 0.00. So remember, you have to indicate that this is all in cm cube. You should tell them here cm cube, even though they didn't tell you, but tell them the unit because it has its own mark. Then uh, 0, 0.0, so that the uh, volume of A used, although they have indicated here cm cube, so you are covered. Even if you don't write cm cube here again, no problem because of these ones here. I didn't take note of them. So we have 28.50. Uh, then over here, Remember, I want to make 22.7. Okay, this should be 22, sorry, not 28. It's far from the rating. Let me clean it off. Okay. So, I just said uh, that's 22.7. Uh, that's 23. 0.50 that's what I wanted to write 0 0.00 then we have 23.50 then I will bear in mind that my end point is going to be 27.22.70 uh, what I do here is that I will add 0 0.1 to the number in my mind which is 22.7 and it will give me 22.80 0 0.00 then when I come here I'll subtract 0 0.1 from the number in my mind and the number in my mind is 22.70 minus 0 0.1 will give you 22.60 0.00 and here I'll write exactly the number in my mind so automatically if you feel your bureau to zero always you will get that this is this then when you come up here you have the calculate the uh, average uh, title value tell the examiner if you are using first second third if you are using first and third you tell them remember that you have to use concordant values that do not vary with more than 0 0.2 so what you do here is a uh, uh, you tell the examiner is equal to actually have first plus second plus third divided by three, then lifting it to give you 22.80 plus 22.60 plus 22.70 divided by three, and uh, at the end you arrive at 22.70 because that's what you use in mind to manipulate. So 22 points, uh, so at the end, we will get our final answer, which will be, I don't want to waste time, the whole answer here is going to land in 22.70 cm cube. You get your two marks, and remember not to cancel your table. Then state the reason why material orange is the suitable indicator for this titration. This question is a, a bit uh, ambiguous, and I wouldn't know. Uh, but the question, the, my happiness, they said, is that they did not say why material orange is the most suitable. 
the question here is that the titration existed between when we go uh, the, the the acid and base used is an acid salt which is NaHSO4 NaHSO4 is an acid salt of a strong acid. This is a, an acid salt of a strong acid, of course, but the base used is sodium hydroxide. So it is assumed. Remember that NHSO4 is actually formed when there is partial neutralization of the H2SO4. And when a stronger seed is partially neutralized, that doesn't make it become weaker seed. So the answer you should give here is just because it's a titration between an, uh, an acid salt of a stronger seed and a, a, a strong base, which allows wide range of indicators. I tested this in the laboratory. I used phenolphthalein and I used methyl orange. Both of them gave me similar equivalent points or what we call end point. So with this, it shows that the titration can permit any indicator. You just tell them here uh, because it's a titration between an acid sort of a strong acid and a stronger base. Then choice of indicator actually is determined by the transition range of the reaction in question. So when you check the transition range of this, uh, it's even think better to use even phenolphthalein, if I must say somehow. But here, any indicator can serve. But I repeat again, the pH range, the pH transition range, check the pH transition range for this reaction. And that's why it can permit wide range. So some really just tell them there that because the titration is between a, 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 an acid salt of a strong acid and a, a strong base, which allows wide range of indicators. Remember, phenolphthalein is when the acid is weak, of course. Uh, then when the base is uh, also strong you use phenolphthalein and the acid is weak but when we have weak base and strong acid uh, material range applies because of the transition range of that uh, material range of course that of phenolphthalein is higher i think closer almost getting close to the transition range is um, above six uh -huh. but that of uh, material range is for is within four point something which means it is good for titrating it between a strong acid and a strong base. So that NAHSO4 stands there as a strong acid, though it's an acid salt, okay? So, number three, say mention one precaution taken to ensure sodium hydrogen tetraoxus of a sick solution is not contaminated by burette. Simple, wash the burette with the acid, with the solution. You wash it with the solution A. Uh -huh. which means you run off, just pour it from the funnel, then allow the fifty, the first uh, 50 ml or more than 50 ml, that's fill the burette from 0 to 50, or from uh, then you discard it. You have adapted it to the titration reagent, so you have a kind of, you washed it out so that there is no more contamination in the burette. So that's the most appropriate way to prevent a contamination by the burette because the burette might have been used for some other titrations and I told you in my video earlier that this is one of the functions of a rough titration. In rough titration you need okay, keep them here. You need to adapt your titrating apparatus by the reagent. Okay then we see the next question. Which class? All the assessment. Okay. So I think this is the continuation. They now say from the results and information provided, calculate the concentration of A in mole per dm cube. Please, here you are required to go back and see the information given about A. Then use the information provided, which is actually this is the equation of the reaction, which will help us a lot in the calculation. So let's uh, go back a bit and see the information about A. We need to lift it. Not here, really. Okay. And remember, A is 12.75 gram per dm cube. Yeah, 12.75 gram per dm cube. That's the information given, the only information given. Then B is a solution of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so you can now go back and use uh, the relationship between a uh, mole per dm cube. So over here, they gave us the mass concentration of uh, A. First, A contains 12.75 grams in one dm cube. And that's me that means the mass concentration of A is specified here. So 
there is a formula that says that molar conch is equal to mass conch all over molar mass. So, so mass conch all over molar mass. Then the molar mass of uh, NaHSO4 is actually in brackets. Hydrogen is one, so you calculate it at the end. You will get 120. So the molar mass of this uh, particular NaH. I just want to put it where it can enter. NaHSO4 is equal to 120 gram per mole. Then the mass conch is actually 12.75, which means molar concentration is equal to 12.75 all over 120. Uh, which will give you 0 0.106, which uh, approximately will amount to 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. That's it. Then remember, here I need to give you courage and hope. Please, endpoints is not really what fails students. As far as students and their teachers are arriving close to the same value, the chance of failing is not there. So if you have used 23, some other person have used 22, some other person have used uh, 21.5, at the end, they will still get it. If you come to the marking scheme, I don't think there are answers to this. Like now I've gotten, this one has an answer because the information has been provided. 12.75 and NAHSO4 is constant. So like, but when you come here, this is where your endpoints plays a role. So uh, for the question number, that's I, I consideration of being more KDNQ, Nothing was said about B. B was just mentioned, telling us that it is actually sodium hydroxide solution. Therefore, you use the formula which says CAVA over CBVB equal to NA over NB. Everything is known here except the CB, which is what we are looking for. Then our CA is what we got from the other question over here, which is 0 0.1 times your endpoint, depending on what your screw used. And I keep saying the endpoint is not going to fail you. It depends on your cooperation with your teacher and also it depends on how accurate you students are. Uh, that why I'm saying this is that you might get a different number from your neighbor in the examination hall. And remember, you are not allowed to look at another person's paper. Focus on your own. What they mark here is the step in calculation. So VA, depending on your own endpoint here, I'm using 22.70. That's my VA. The CB is unknown times volume of uh, uh, prepared used. I use, I assume we use 25. If your school use 20, you put it there equal to 1 over 1 because checking the equation of the reaction over here the mole ratio of acid is 1 that's the coefficient here is also 1 is to 1 so we automatically have that uh, cb is equal to 0 0.1 times 22.70 uh, divided by 25 which will now give us uh, this is going to be 2.270 divided by 25 by 25 I give you 0 0.09 uh, mole per dm cube on the approximate you can still take it to be 0 0.1 mole per dm cube so that's it then I think other questions they ask I might try to remember because I don't think I didn't copy them out here I think I didn't bring this material but I, I saw it I deleted it mistakenly where they asked the uh, in the mass of you know if they tell you the mass concentration of B it is very simple you just use zero point if they tell you to find the concentration of B in gram per dm cube it is just simple by using uh, zero point one which is concentration mole per dm cube is equal to mass conch all over molar mass and molar mass of sodium hydroxide is equal to forty so what we have here is that mass conch 
is equal to 0 0.1 times 40, which will give you 4 gram per dm cube for mass conk. Then, the other question is, uh, what's the uh, mass of salt, yes, liberated in the reaction? Here, there is a kind of little confusion. The mass of salt liberated, I think I'm going to... I need my board. Uh -huh. So here... Uh, I want to clean this and solve for mass of salt. Remember the salt there is sodium tetrahydrosulfate 6. The mass of salt is formed. They didn't specify the volume, but remember that in the reaction it is assumed that the volume you used is 25 or highest or 22.5. And what gave us the salt should come direct from the acid. So the equation of the reaction, I repeat, is sodium hydrogen tetrahydrosulfate 6 plus sodium hydroxide will give you sodium sulfate, which is the salt they are talking about, plus water. One is the one. Therefore, you relate this. One mole of this will give you one mole of this. Therefore, we have one, uh, the one mole of this give us one mole of Na2SO4. And by checking by molar mass, I think the molar mass of this is just 120 plus 23 because that's the extra thing we added. So we have 143 is the thing. It shows that one mole According to the equation, the stoichiometry shows that one mole of NAHSO4 will give you 143 grams of this salt. But in that titration, you used actually, uh, for me, my VA is what I will encourage you to use here. And this salt should be coming from this. I advise you don't relate this and this, relate this and this, which is 1 is to 1. So, and uh, the concentration of A given was 0 0.1. That's the concentration of uh, a that was provided but that's 0 0.1 that's ca is equal to 0 0.1 mole per dm cube you know that this means one liter remember you did not use a whole liter in the reaction in that hall so I, I wonder what they will take here i think they will accept whoever solve regarding with 0 0.1 will get it whoever solve regarding the fact that what we use that of the whole thing the average we use which is the main reaction is your va which is 22.7 like my own endpoint so what you have to do, which is correct, is if if 1,000 contains 0 0.1 mole for CA, what will 22.70 contain? Because this is the actual volume you used, which will give you X. Then after multiplying, we have that 0 0.1 divided by 1,000 times 22.7. Okay, so we have that x is equal to 0 0.00227 moles, which will also give you the same mole as this because this is 1 is to 1, so we have ratio of 1 is to 1, therefore 0 0.00227 will also give you 0 0.00227 of Na2SO4. Why the molar mass of this is 143, if I'm correct, that's 46 plus uh, 32 plus 64. The 145, sorry, not 143. This should be 145. Oh, sorry, 143, don't mind my... What's wrong with me here? 143, please. Yeah, so it means automatically that our answer is 0.0. 0227 times 143 that should be the correct mass liberated 143 times 0.00227 so the mass liberated from my own endpoint should be 0.32 grams of sodium tetrazos of a6 is produced so but if you use 0 0.1, it is just, it's going to be 1.43. If you assume that your CA is, which is the concentration actually, but you did not use the whole one liter, you used 22.7. That's your end point is what you use in that titration. So thank you for watching. Her Majesty's World Science Channel is good for you. Endeavor to watch other uh, experiments here on this channel. And uh, over here, there are many things to entertain you. You see watermelon explosion.
fans and sign on Zooms. Please subscribe and yeah, we'll have a good time. It's three sick muzzles of the eyeball. Different actions of the Latissimus Darcy. Okay, uh, we might even take a look at the effect of a uh, heat on the uh, Okay, that's it for today's uh, revision on the just concluded Nico practicals. God bless you. Subscribe. I love you. Thank you for watching.